IB itself has around 210 schools in India today. This makes it easier for families to consider this option. Now, undergrad applications are quite complex, you know, building a very strong foundation itself or you are not designed for this competitive exam culture, then US education can be a great option for you. Overall, it was quite a struggle and it took him an extra semester just to graduate. I'm seeing a lot of queries about undergrad applications in US these days and while I'm going to cover it in more detail in future videos, today I want to talk about this very important question that is what is the right time to go to US for your education, college or masters? Let's go for it. Alright, so today we are talking about what is the best time to go to US for your education, whether it's college or bachelor's or master's or MBA. Now before we begin, I want to clarify some of the terminology here. Okay, so undergraduate means bachelor's or college education in US. In India, we sometimes call it UG courses, but sometimes we also call it graduation. When I say undergrad in today's video, I mean college or bachelor's studies. In US, what we call grad school is basically for master's, MBA, any sort of master's degree or even PhD education. In India, we usually refer to it as post-graduation or PG courses. So when I say grad school today, I am referring to master's courses. Now that the terminology is clear, let's talk about today's video and I'm going to cover four points. First is why is there a growing demand for undergrad study abroad education in India now? Secondly, what are the advantages of going directly for bachelors then we'll talk about what are the advantages of going for masters in us lastly we will talk about does it make sense for indians to go to us for their undergrad let's get into it so the main question is why are more and more families considering this undergrad study abroad option nowadays because a decade ago two decades ago people mostly considered study abroad or us for masters degrees only but now that scenario is changing and I feel there are multiple factors at play here. So let's just quickly understand some of those. First, I feel is the penetration of IB schools or international board schools is growing fast in India. So there are primarily two international board. One is the IB and second is the Cambridge board. So IB itself has around 210 schools in India today. And so overall, I would say combined, there would be around 300 to 400 international board schools in India and all the students students going in these programs are mostly at least 90% of them are growing up with the mindset that they will pursue a global education, they might move abroad for college itself. So it is this coming of age of students that is where the families are now finding out information about study abroad in undergrad itself. Second factor I feel is there are so many Indians in US now. So in each family where you have a close relative living in US, it leads to a very good support system system getting built in US and these families are encouraging their relatives back in India to send their kids abroad for education, right? So this makes it easier for families to consider this option, which was not happening a decade ago. Like when I went, I was the first person in my family ever to go to US. But now I have around five to six cousins in US itself. So with this kind of support system, it is natural that kids will consider this study abroad earlier in their life. Then of course, the case is that the information is more easily available now or accessible because of internet because of social media now undergrad applications are quite complex and to fully understand that you either need a very good counselor or consultant but at least you can do your homework based on the information available on internet so this is why families are becoming more and more informed about this choice and lastly i feel just look at how well indians are doing in us and if you look at this chart which is absolutely mind-blowing if you look at all the immigrant ethnic groups in India, it is the Indian Americans who have the highest median household income there. They are earning almost $100,000. So Indian American families are earning $100,000 on an average. They are absolutely thriving. So their relatives are looking at them and they are thinking, hey, why can't we do the same thing, right? So all these factors, I think this is the reason we are seeing more and more people interested in undergrad education 
in US and I believe this trend is only going to continue. Now let's talk about the pros or advantages of going to US for your bachelors. I mean, is it really beneficial to go for it? And the biggest advantage I see here is, you know, building a very strong foundation itself. When I look at my own college learning or the kind of education I had in India, I, I feel that it was a lot of rote learning involved and my concepts in many of the areas are still pretty weak. Whereas if you look at US education, I think it's much more interactive and experience based and it's a more richer experience. And I'm not talking about cost. I'm talking about the infrastructure, tools, technologies and resources available at your disposal. You will be working with latest machines in the lab. You will see the latest technologies in schools itself. So there is a lot more experiential learning and the focus is on overall personality development rather than theoretical focus which I think can be healthier and a better way of learning for anyone and of course the biggest advantage and the reason why so many Indian families consider going for a bachelor's is that you avoid the whole competitive exam race in India. I have a lot of concerns about the competitive exams and how they leave you at the mercy of your performance in one day of the full year right so you may have studied hard you may be very very talented but if you could not perform well on that competitive exam then you cannot go for the field you want to and that sounds to me absolutely ridiculous so I enjoy or admire the fact that in other countries you are not at the mercy of your performance in one exam but you can choose a career that you are really interested in based on so many other factors so I feel the overall application process of US education itself is very very holistic I mean when you write those essays when you really think about what you want to do in life it makes you a happier professional you know so I feel it's a big advantage and if you feel that you cannot cope up or you're not designed for this competitive exam culture then US education can be a great option for you and apart from that there are other advantages also like if I feel that if you are doing your bachelor's in a country like US you may not even need to go for a master's like MBA is different but like I could have skipped master's if I had that kind of education in my bachelor's itself which is like saving a year or two years of your life as well as opportunity cost and lastly I mean look master's is optional right you can keep working or grow your career even without a master's but bachelor's is mandatory you are going to spend those four years somewhere so if you spend that in a place in an advanced education system like US then it you can go for the lowest opportunity cost here and save a lot of time energy and effort later in life you get that early start which can position you to thrive later in your career so I think those are great benefits of going for bachelors in US now let's talk about advantages of going for masters okay so and there are a lot of them there is a reason why most people go for masters and not bachelors and first of course is the cost of education itself like I mean going for bachelors education you can easily expect to shell out one crore plus in your education whereas we have talked about this a lot doing a master's in US depending on if you're going for STEM field or a job friendly field kind of thing research field etc you can get many assistantships and your the cost of your master's can be much much lower you can even do it for free like me but like even if you don't get full funding maybe you can do it in like 20 30 lakh as opposed to spending a crore on it so of course it's cheaper to go for masters that is why most at least middle class families can afford to go to us only on a master's degree second advantage is and th this is a valid concern among the families when a student is going for his bachelor's education he's around 17 18 years old and that is a very tender age and there is a genuine concern that's such a big change in your lifestyle when you're moving from from India to US can throw you off balance and if a kid is not able to adapt to those changes then it can become really overwhelming and then even a talented kid might succumb to peer pressure or get into wrong sort of company or bad habits like drugs etc. Now I know that's a concern even in rising concern in India also nowadays but yes this is something that families have to consider that like you know whether when you're going for masters you are already at an age you have a certain 
certain sense of maturity that you are able to handle those life changes more easily whereas if you are going in bachelors it can be tricky for some students but i want to cover a major advantage of going for masters instead of bachelors many people don't know it but when you are applying for the h1b lottery or work visa thing there is a separate quota for advanced degrees like masters okay but but when you are applying for work visa after you finish your bachelor's degree your application goes in the common pool itself so the point i'm trying to make is if you apply for a h1b lottery as a master student you have a higher chance of getting picked up as opposed to when you're applying as a bachelor student so this is a disadvantage for bachelor student that they will have a harder time finding the work visa and this is also the reason why many undergrad kids in us international kids if they are not able to find a job directly then they go for a dual like bachelor's plus master's option which they are able to finish in 5 years so they can do bachelor's and then continue for 1 years of master's education and now they can apply for h1b lottery in this advanced quota so do think about this factor as well when you are making this decision so now let's come to the most important and last part of this video that is should you go to us for your bachelor's education does it make sense or not and i feel this is very much dependent on the personality and drive of the student himself i've seen two cases and i'll give you the example first is this self disciplined kid from lucknow he is quite mature for his age and he is inertly driven and very interested in technology he is pursuing his bachelor's in science at university of drexel with a major in computer science and a focus on ai in medicine he is absolutely thriving there he even got like partial scholarship so he is doing extremely well and there is this second kid from a wealthy family in chandigarh shy reserved kind of a person the family really wanted him to study abroad so they conditioned him accordingly and he even got into princeton but he did struggle there from day 1 to the extent that his mother had to go and live there uh, for like 6 months at a stretch just to emotionally support him overall it was quite a struggle and it took him an extra semester just to graduate so if you look at these two cases same age but a kid's response to this big life change is very different so 17 year is very very tender age right and how the kid responds to it it depends very much on the inner clarity of this person so i feel those students thrive or tend to do well who are fundamentally more career driven more ambitious in nature and they themselves want to study in us so the decision of studying there should come from the kid not be a forced decision by the family or the parent but this is a very important decision it has to be taken very carefully and you have to like you know look at the personality and the emotional iq of the student as well i might do a separate video geared more towards like helping parents to evaluate whether like you know their kid would be able to handle handle this change and whether it makes sense for the kid to go to us for the undergrad education or not if you're interested in that video let me know in the comments and i will do some research around it but so overall what i'm trying to say is it's it's a big decision and a very subjective one no one can tell you in black and white so please make it carefully so let me know what you think about this topic because again it can be pretty controversial but i think it's a, it's it's a more like you know this concern is only rising and more people are trying to find out this information so overall i hope these four points have helped you make this decision or evaluate the pros and cons more objectively if you have more questions on this topic please leave below and don't forget to subscribe because i will be back with a fresh new video next week until then take care bye bye